What is going on? The training diary is back. It's 2017 and we're still in Australia, but someone has stuck some clouds in the sky and it's freezing. Last time I spoke to you, what we have is like 45 degrees. Now we've got 24. Oh, it's shocking. I'm only kidding. It's still 24 degrees. I'm going to take this coat off. Uh, I just wanted to make you guys feel better at home for all those winter winter woolies. Uh, okay, I'll give you a quick update of what's been going on, but it's going to have to be a little bit quick, this one, uh, because we've got the Lancelin Ocean Classic coming up. It's like the big event here in Australia. It's a big, fun event. Uh, the Aussie boys like to have a few beers, crack them open, uh, and do a big long-distance race. There's obviously a wave competition. There's a bit of sausage kite surfing going on as well. Uh, and to get the crowds in on the Friday night, in true... Aussie style, they've got a tumbola. No, they haven't. They've got a raffle. No, they haven't. They've obviously got a wet t-shirt competition. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think I'll be entering, but uh, $500 up for the first prize should be entertaining. We're gonna be covering the, the Lancelin Ocean Classic and the long distance race and everything here at windsurfing.tv. So stay tuned to the Facebook page. We'll do some, try and do some little live feeds and a little bit just to give you an idea of how that competition is. Cause it's kind of like no other competition in the world. It's Australian. And like I said, it's a bit of a fun factor, uh, but there's some good guys going and it's gonna be pretty interesting. Jay Stone, yes, he's back on the water. So back from injury. Uh, a little update on Philip Costa. I actually saw social media. He's back in a month. So a couple of those guys who've been injured are coming back. Uh, so what has been going on here in Australia? Well, as you can probably tell from the updates that are on windsurfing.tv, uh, I've been pretty busy sailing uh, over the Christmas and New Year. Uh, I spent it up north uh, and it was in quite interesting. Uh, Christmas in Nalu is not something like you will have anywhere else. And New Year's, I would say, is even more different. You know, New Year's back in my younger years, 12 o'clock kind of came, gone, it disappears really quickly and you party until four in the morning. Well, in Nalu, you're struggling to make 12. You, we sailed pretty much all day, right till dark. Uh, we then uh, sort of got a gathering at the Hilton. If you've never heard of the Hilton, the Hilton is like, basically it's a shed, but that's kind of like luxury living up up north in Nalu. Uh, so we sort of, uh, most of the campers, most of the guys who are sort of living there for the winter, uh, kind of congregated around there. And we had quite a bit going on. We had Massimo, the uh, you know resident Italian, cooking the old pasta, which is pretty cool. Uh, we had Rene, uh, he, he made a curry, uh, kangaroo curry. Don't ask you how he got that kangaroo, but let's just say his, his, his four wheel drive's looking a bit worse from where. But kangaroo curry, or all, all, all tasty uh, and I think Timo even made a chocolate cake uh, so we were living the dream but by 11 o'clock everyone was thinking can we move like New Year's a little bit earlier like 11 because everyone was fading fast uh, we had the fire going and like you say happy new year came went and pretty much by five past 12 <laughs> everyone was fast asleep so that's pretty much how new year went but the sailing like I said it's been pretty epic the flies like I told you has been pretty epic as well so it's not for the faint-hearted up there. Uh, so what is it like Christmas Day? I've got to say Santa delivered the presents and there was some bombs coming through, <laughs> some absolute nugs. Uh, Dieter van der Eiken pretty much got barreled. I mean, you watch this, you can see it in slow-mo. I think if we move him back like five meters, he could be in the tube there. Just need that mast under the lip and he's got a, a lovely tube ride. Uh, it was better in the morning. Those shots from D2 were kind of in the morning when it was a bit more glassy and there was some smooth lines coming through. During the day, the sort of wind picked up. It got a bit choppy if we're going to be picky. So it was quite difficult to ride the big ones later in the day. Uh, but D2 got a few nugs at the beginning. Uh, but he had to put, put, you know, he had to put his, uh, his shift in. He was like second on the water, uh, first man on the water, Ferran. Well, first man to ride a wave. We actually had Steve, who I called Pete in the last one because we've been calling him Peanut and I got all confused. Don't ask me. But Steve went out, wobbled out, couldn't quite make it. Then Ferran went out. Uh, he got a wave, you know, little sort of medium size, little nice little, yeah, warm up wave. He goes back out and I'm sitting on the beach filming. I'm filming the bommy, which is downwind. It's like this 
I mean, super shallow reef. If you end up down there, you're pretty much going to walk away with not a lot of clothes on, never mind kit left. Uh, so I was sort of filming that as these big ones come through. And then I hear the, the crowd on the beach start going, ooh, you think something's happening. So I spun the camera around and there's Fran on a bomb set early in the day, not much wind, and he's coming down the face. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking through the camera, so I can't see much. I just see him go straight through the tube. Oh, oh fucking hell. So uh, there's going to be a new feature on windsurfing.tv. I haven't quite named it yet. It was going to be like shit happens. It was going to be lip happens. It was going to be watch out for the lip. It was going to be a few things. But for now, it's just going to be the lip sunglasses wipe out of the day. Yeah, there's no little jingle yet. I'm gonna get it sorted, don't worry. But Lip Sunglasses, obviously my sponsors, uh, sponsoring Tatty Franz, putting a, a lot of effort in at the moment, doing some awesome water shades. They've got the Typhoon, they've got the Surge. Uh, definitely get on their website because they are like helping windsurfing.tv push forward this year. So uh, check out Lip Sunglasses and they're sponsoring Wipe Out the Day. So back to Ferran, he goes through the tube are you kidding me so i we go back obviously later on and you slow mo it down and you see he said and then he, he actually gave an explanation uh <laughs> i couldn't really understand what he was on about but basically there he seemed to be a bit of chicken he was a bit scared so he jumped off and when you slow mo you can see he kind of comes down and then thinks hang on a minute i haven't got enough wind to pull out in front so he just kind of jumps off and the kit goes straight through the tube how did that kit get on? Well, on the beach, I think you might be surprised to know, the only thing that broke was the mast. It went through about four or five, six different rinse cycles. Uh, I mean, Ferran didn't actually want to come in. He swam out to sea, and this is the link to Dieter van der Eiken, because Dieter was second out. Ferran is there swimming on his own at the back. Dieter looks around and goes, what's he doing out? And he's like, help, because <laughs> he didn't want to come through the break. So grabs hold of Dieter's gear and Dieter has to tow him in, which I could imagine. Luckily, there didn't, there's no massive sets came through at the time because Dieter was getting pulled back, going about two knots. One of them sets come through. <laughs> it's going to be a funny one. And to top it off, Dieter even went down and rescued his kit before it went on the bomb. He, oh, I'll save you the day. And like I said, he got his just rewards. He got those big barreling waves. Uh, so Dieter definitely star performer. And he actually had to leave Christmas Day to go down to Perth to pick his girlfriend up. So there you go, Dieter. Oh, we salute you. Uh, and so does Ferran. Uh, what happened on, uh, else happened on Christmas Day? There were some big takedowns. A lot of these could have had wipe out the day, but I was sailing. It was Christmas, you know, so I only got a few, but there was one I just caught as I spun the camera around, and this guy got a full pasting. Oh! 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 You can, if we slow mow it down, you can see that thing just lands on his head. I was like, oh, and he just manages to escape most of the impact. But I reckon his ears are still pretty much uh, are ringing from that one. Uh, then we have the Italian stallion. He's back on the water after about 10 years there. I think Andrea, he hasn't been sailing for 10 years. He used to do the peel away a bit ago and he's got some uh, good wave rides. But this one out the front door just caught it a bit wrong. <laughs> Ow! Fuck, I hope we get out of the oh. And then we had uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny going for the uh, airdrop, King airdrop, and he was lucky not to just catch the nose. Oh, Johnny! Oh. <laughs> just as he comes up, the you know the wave up there really sucks up and goes hollow, and he just get it's that nose uh, and makes the drop but that could have been uh, pretty nasty so yeah there was a there was a bit going on but we had some epic sailing I was up there for probably two weeks and stuff but there was there was a lot of the days actually if I'm gonna be honest were too windy we've had I would say since I've been in nearly every sailable day but the last 30 days have all been sailable I didn't sail yesterday I need a break. I know everyone back home in Europe is going, shut up, Ben, shut up. We've had the worst autumn ever uh, and it's now freezing and I've seen guys sailing the snow back home, but I'm sorry, it has been good. I've seen Cape Town's been good, so I think, you know, they've got a good fair share as well. But over here, it has been windy, almost too windy. Uh, but we've had some good days. 
the four or five days were better. The four or two days is probably my most used sale. Four or two, most used sale, crazy. Uh, but we've had, like I say, good days, good medium size, and a lot of guys hanging around. We've got we've got the girls pushing pretty hard. We've got Lena Erpenstein up there. Uh, she's been getting some good cracks. Justina Schnally's been up there. So the girls are pushing hard. Uh, and then we've got all the, you know, the local boys and uh, who, you know, they go up there and they are some, they are a hardy bunch. They go up there for like months at a time. They've got full camps set up and you can't handle Nalu very easily. And these boys are like, I don't know, years and years of practice. Some guy's been up there 30 years, I know, uh, or something like that. It's ridiculous. Bertel being one of them, the big uh, Austrian. Um, ex-kickboxing champion or something and he's a big lad you wouldn't want to mess with him don't nick his wave i'll tell you uh, and then alex obviously he was one of the the key figures up there he's been going up there a long time and actually it was his 50th birthday the other day and i was lucky enough to get an invite uh, and we actually went over to red bluff which is a surfing spot sort of around the point about half an hour's drive uh, it's like this barreling sort of uh, point break behind the bluff that's obviously why it's called red bluff it's like a mountain range i've never been there before but what an awesome place um, not good for windsurfing but surfing wise just as such a nice setup and there's kind of two families that live there uh, and we actually went to one of those guys house they sort of run the sort of whole place uh, and keep it going called the durant family now there's only a couple of things you can do up there um one of them is surfing so you're obviously very good at surfing and the other well, let me just say, yeah, they've got uh, eight kids uh, and the other family up there has got about seven kids. So you can imagine what the other pastime is. Uh, and actually, the majority of the kids are girls uh, and they are rippers. We went to this uh, Durant family's house, such a cool house, such a good vibe, really nice, uh, nice scene up there. And uh, he was showing us some videos from one of their kids and a few. And this Alex, uh, I, I just checked a video out on YouTube. Just check out the barrels they're getting and they are just sending it. So pretty impressive stuff. They've even got a pet kangaroo. Uh, but we had an awesome uh, evening up there. So Alex 50th and he is the master of the cheese roll. Yeah, I'd said he's been up there a fair few years. So he's got the old school move style, but just check out the cheese. Uh, Cesare Cantagalli, I think you should enter this cheese roll into your competition. I think you can have Alex as the winner because that is a sick cheese roll. Come on, that is a sick cheese roll. Uh, so, yeah, Alex is up there. There's, there's so many people to mention and, you know, so many good friends up there. Like I said to you, Massimo before, he's always looked after us when we go up there. Um, but it's, uh, like I say, it's not an easy place to live. Um, what else has been going on? Um, um, <laughs> what else has been going on? Um, to be honest, there's not a lot else been going on. We've just been sailing a lot. Uh, I'm broken. I need a physio, uh, but that's about it. I think, I think we'll just call it there because, I, like I said, I've got to go to the Lancelin Classic. The wet t-shirt competition's coming up. The waves start tomorrow. I'm still up in Jero, so I've got a still a long drive. I've got to make this video and try and get it out beforehand. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So lots of sailing. Uh, we get, I'm going to bring you news, like I say, from the Lancelin Ocean Classic, and we're going to bring you some jumping. Uh, hopefully after Lano, we're going to come back to Geraldton and I'll bring Bring you an update on Jager Stone, who actually dressed up. I've got to tell you this: he dressed up in the full hood, uh, he full like gloves, boots, five mil wetsuit. Went out of Corris the other day in like 30 degrees just to get used to sailing in case he gets the call for the Red Bull Storm chase. Have I got any footage? No, I missed it. But classic, really, absolute classic. So he's hoping he's going to get the call. Uh, obviously the Red Bull Storm Chase is on, uh, so the first storm coming in now uh, and those boys will be going for it. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, also, I've got to say beer money. Uh, everyone who donated beer money in uh, 2016, legends, you're on the League of Legends. But what I thought I would do is anyone who's donated £10 and more, so every £10 you have put into the beer money will get you a raffle ticket. So if you've donated £10, that's one raffle ticket. If you donate £100, like actually a few people did, that's 10 raffle tickets and I will figure out some prizes if anyone wants to donate some prizes to these kind people it's kind of like chipping into the beer money because I'm going to push it back to the guys who put the beer money you get the problem I don't know it's kind of just a thing that just hit me we're going to do that so uh, stay tuned for the beer money raffle uh, more news on that and the 217 beer money thing is up now uh, so if you want to put any beer money to win serving TV uh, you know where to go cheers boys uh, see you at the Lancelin Ocean Classic